Hey everybody. So in this video, we're going to look at different methods of proof. Our first method is going to be proof by counterexample. And when we prove by counterexample, we need to show one example that does not work for the statement. And one example is sufficient. So in this question, we've been asked to use a counterexample to disprove this statement. Now for any pair of integers, x and y, if x is greater than y, then x squared plus x must be greater than y squared plus y. So we begin by choosing a value of x and y that satisfy this statement. So let's say that x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 1. And using these values, we know that x is greater than y. So now we'll substitute these values into our second statement. So we've got 2 squared plus 2, which is 6, is greater than the 1 squared plus 1, which is 2. And you can see that this statement is true. So it doesn't disprove the statement. But we can choose a different pair. If we say that x is equal to 2 and y is equal to negative 3, then 2 squared plus 2 is still 6. And y squared plus the negative 3, so minus 3, becomes 6 is not greater than itself. So in this example, this proves the statement. And as with any proof, we need a final written statement as our conclusion. So we say that when x equals 2 and y equals negative 3, x is greater than y, but x squared plus x equals y squared plus y. Therefore, disproving the statement that x squared plus x is greater than y squared plus y for all pairs of integers x and y. Okay, let's try another example. So in this question, we're told Dominic believes that for every positive integer n, at least one of two to the n minus one and two to the n plus one is prime. We've been asked to use a counterexample to prove that Dominic is wrong. So if we begin with n equals three and we find two to the three minus one, well, this will be 8 minus 1, which is 7, and 7 is prime. So we don't need to try 2n plus 1, as we know this one satisfies the statement. If we try n equals 4, we've got 2 to the 4 minus 1. So 16 minus 1 is 15, and 15 is not prime. But if we try 2 to the 4 plus 1, we get 16 plus 1, which is 17, and this is prime. So again, n equals 4 does satisfy this statement. And when n equals 5, we get 2 to the 5 minus 1, which is 31. And this is prime. So if we try n equals 6, we get 2 to the 6 minus 1. And 64 minus 1 is 63. This is not prime. So we'll try 2 to the 6 plus 1. And this is 65, which again is not prime. So we've shown then the example when n equals 6 disproves this statement. So our conclusion will be when n equals 6, 2 to the 6 minus 1 equals 63 and 2 to the 6 plus 1 equals 65, both of which are not prime. So therefore, disproving the statement by counterexample. Okay? So in our next example, we're going to look at a different method of proof. So now we've been asked to prove by exhaustion that every even number between 20 and 30 inclusive can be written as a sum of two primes. So we can prove a mathematical statement is true by exhaustion by breaking the statement into smaller cases and proving each one separately. So for this example, we need to look at all the even numbers between 20 and 30 inclusive. So we've got 20, 22, 24, 26, 28 and 30. We know 20 can be written as the sum of 13 and 7 both of which are prime, 22, 19 plus 3, 24, 
we've got 19 plus 5, 26. The primes would be 23 plus 3, 28. 23 plus 5. And for 30, we could have 23 plus 7. So by considering each individual case, we've shown that all the evens between 20 and 30 inclusive can be written as the sum of two primes. So our conclusion would be, we've shown all even numbers between 20 and 30 inclusive can be written as the sum of two primes, and therefore the statement is true. Okay, let's try one more example. So finally, we've been asked to prove that when a two digit number is divisible by nine, reversing its digits also gives a number that is divisible by nine. So for this question, we need to think about the two digit numbers that are divisible by nine. These are 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81, 90, and 99. If we go beyond the 99, we're looking at a three digit number. And if we go less than the 18, we're looking at a one digit number. So now if we reverse each of these digits, we get 81, 72, 63, 54, 45, 36, 27, 18, 0, 9, or just 9, and 99. And all we've done is we've repeated the number in this list. So if neither divisible by 9, then so are these. So our conclusion then will be that these numbers are also divisible by 9, so the statement has been proved by method of exhaustion. Okay? Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did find that helpful, please like and subscribe. And you can download the full lesson and worksheet from my website, mrmathematics.com.